Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of Rant World with me, Notorious BLT. So, <sighs> I would like to talk about food today because food is delicious and I love it. Uh, there's a kind of food place, like a restaurant, that I've been looking for for a while around here. That I, uh, when I say around here, I mean around where I live now, uh, that I haven't really been able to find. And I don't want to say it's driving me nuts, but I'd really love to find a place like this. And that place is a Mongolian barbecue place. Because there was one in Illinois, where I used to live, in Chicago, well, very very near Chicago, uh, that was absolutely delicious, and it was called Genghis Khan. And if you don't know what Mongolian barbecue is, my experience with it was basically, you get a bowl, a big one, and you go through what, like, like, a, like a buffet line, almost, and you put various meats and vegetables and sauces in this bowl. And the meats are raw, but they are frozen. Okay? And I mean like frozen solid, like rock solid, but they're very thinly shaved. So it's almost like, uh, not paper thin, That's that's don't be ridiculous. But, uh, God, how, how thin would you put it? Like, um, like if you had an envelope with a card in it, maybe about that thick. Or thin, or whatever perspective you want to have on it. Anyway, uh, so y you put those meats in there and all these vegetables and stuff and all these sauces. And then you go up to a counter, sort of. Basically, it's an area that contains, uh, at least in my experience, again, it was two chefs and then a giant hot table. Hot table being, it it's basically like... Um, If you were to take, like, a pan and heat it over a flame, it's basically like the metal of that pan. It is super freaking hot. Like, hot enough to cook things, okay? So, uh, you bring this food, this, this bowl of stuff, up to these guys, and then they take it and they throw it on there, and with these huge chopsticks, they cook everything up, and then they slide it back into the bowl for you, and then you just go and eat, and that's basically what you're doing the whole time. You're just stuffing your face with delicious food the whole time. And I, I gotta say, man... That is one of the things that I miss most about living where I used to live in Illinois is Mongolian barbecue. I mean, also, I miss the pizza as well because I got to tell you, and don't let any crazy people from New York tell you that Chicago pizza is not pizza, okay? Uh, deep dish, okay, I, maybe, whatever. But you all call your stuff a pie anyway, so don't be calling our stuff a pie or whatever and then saying, oh, it's not a pizza because it's a pie because that's ridiculous. But anyway, if you've never had Chicago thin crust pizza... It's, it's damn good. It's like, like cracker crispy, the thin crust pizza. It is really good. But Chicago makes a very good pizza and dip, deep dish pizza. If you don't know what deep dish pizza is, it's like this thick crust, almost like, um, like a more dense pie crust, but it's savory. And you fill that thing with like what is essentially a wheel of cheese. And then your various toppings. So, you know, you got your, your sauce and then all the uh, the different, like, meats or vegetables or whatever you want to put on there. And it is just, oh, it is so good. It is so ridiculously good. But you really do kind of have to eat it with a knife and fork because normally you get, like, one. Well, I don't want to say you get one per person. That sounds ridiculous. But you can get one per person if you really want to. Uh, and and they're not the same size as, as a normal pizza. It's like a, you know, like normal pizza to, f to feed like two people or whatever. These things are much smaller. It's uh, They're like always the size of a personal pizza, but they're very, very deep. Uh, maybe like three or four inches deep? I don't know. My my perspective on this may be different, but or it may be incorrect in terms of like the depth of this pizza. But I, I got to say, they are just, oh, they're so good. But yeah, Mongolian barbecue, deep dish pizza, Chicago pizza. Because unfortunately, at least where I am in Massachusetts, they don't make the greatest pizza. Um, there's a couple places that do, though. Like, uh, there's a place down the street from me that is that makes very good pizza. Um, do I actually make this jump? I don't know. Do I screw this up? I think I make it. Yeah. Uh, but in, in for the most part, a lot of the pizza around here is not all that great. Oh, there's a place by my parents that makes pizza that is not the same, but somewhat reminiscent of the stuff that I used to get in Chicago. 
Uh, I think part of what makes the stuff in Chicago so great, at least what I remember it being great about it, was um, if I remember right, they put oregano on on it. Like they cook it with a little bit of. Or, do they cook it with a bit of oregano? I, I don't really remember. Man, it's been so long. Because let's see, I moved from Chicago when I was 13. So that that should give you some perspective. Because right now I am 34. <laughs> oh my God, it's been 21 years that I've been living here. 21 years. That is ridiculous. Oh, my Lord. More than half my life has been in Massachusetts. I have certainly turned into a Massachusetts person, though. Most most certainly. Uh, whatever that actually means. But, uh, yeah, there's a place near my parents that does their pizza in a similar way. In terms of, like, the thin crust, etc. It, it's, it's very, very good. I would recommend, but I also don't want, like, you know... Folks knowing where my parents live, because that just seems strange, right? <laughs> you don't want to be talking about where your parents live in case somebody wants to go and say hello. And, you know, you, you just don't want random people coming. Not that I think that you guys are going to do that, but, you know, you never know with, like, trolls and stuff. If, if anybody sees the video and they're like, oh, I'm going to go visit this person's parents and then harass them. Like, yeah, could you not? <laughs> That's another thing. People, like, referring to stuff as trolling when it's really not, that drives me nuts. Like, when people say, you know, like, if somebody's just basically being a jerk and they're like, oh, I'm trolling. No, man. Trolling was, like funny and good maybe not good but it was at least served a purpose long ago and if you don't know what trolling originally was was back in the day when people on like on a on an internet chat room because that they were called they were chat rooms not forums uh or actually wait were they now i'm getting myself confused no i think they may have been called were they called forums it doesn't matter it doesn't matter uh at least for the purpose of this, it doesn't matter. The, the point is that if you would catch some person on one of these chat rooms or forums being, I don't want to just say logically inconsistent, but basically just being a butthole, you would play along with them, but then like subtly drop these little bits and pieces of information that they might latch onto, and then you use that against them. So it had to be kind of more clever and not just like calling somebody a name and then going troll because that's just that's not trolling. That's just being stupid. <laughs> Same thing with like people that hack games online to like, you know, to to make other people angry. Trolling was not just about making people angry. It was about pointing out the ridiculousness of some people's arguments. That, that, that's what it is or what it was to me anyway. Not this weirdness of, or not even weirdness, this, like, ridiculous idea that just somehow being a jerk meant trolling. Like, no, dude, that's not how that, that's not how that works at all. That's not how that works at all. It, you know, I had, I was having a conversation, uh, girlfriend and I went and had uh, dinner with a friend of ours uh, th this, this past week. And we started talking about technology and how far it's come. And to give, <laughs> give you an idea of why this came up. Uh, we were talking about um, this program called Schools Match Wits, which is like local schools kind of having like trivia battles almost. Uh, and it, it, this friend of ours and I went to the same high school just at very different times. She graduated in like 1980 something. I want to say like 82. Yeah, she graduated in, 80, in 1982. I graduated in 2002. Uh, so very different times. Um, but, uh, one of the things that we saw in her, because she brought out her yearbook to, to, to show some of the stuff about, uh, the schools match witch thing. And, um, one of the pictures in the yearbook had her using a mimeograph machine, which was something that they used for, uh, a mimeograph was like, um, instead of a copy machine, it had a crank that you would turn and it would spit out copies of the same... Let, let me make sure I'm not misspeaking here. I believe that's what the mimeograph was. Mimeograph machine. Because it, while a lot of my uh, like my, my uh, elementary school used one... Let's see. Uh, stencil duplicate. Yep, okay. So it, it's a duplicator. Yeah, and that's exactly what I remember it looking like. Oh my god, it's so big and cumbersome. <laughs> uh, so bef in, it, before the days of copy machines, instead of, uh, you know... 
just going to the to the computer and sitting in you know hitting print a bunch of times or going to the copy machine and hitting you know copy a bunch of times you used to have to put a uh, the the base document in the mimeograph machine and then turn this crank and it would just pump out copies as you were turning the crank and it used a film to transfer to basically make carbon copies which is where that that term comes from at least if I remember right that's where that term comes from and anyway we started talking about technology and how crazy it's gotten and like how we all remember days before the internet like or rather before it became uh, widely used and also um obviously before copy machines and just like how cell phones have evolved which is just crazy like some people may not remember but i remember the giant dinosaur phones like the thing that was a brick that if you threw it at somebody and it hit them it could cause real damage because the thing was super heavy they, they were actually like the size of bricks if not bigger with a giant antenna sticking off and then how that kind of turned into a smaller version of that phone and then uh they started turning into like flip phones and i remember i had my flip phone for the longest time and then in college was when smartphones started to come around and it was like this crazy cool breakthrough and now everybody basically has a camera and video camera and phone and computer in their pocket things didn't always used to be like this i mean at one point texting was the big accomplishment. Being able to talk to somebody on the phone and then text them was a huge thing. And now we're, you know, we have touch screens and all sorts of other stuff. It just, it's mind blowing how fast technology has moved. You know, and then thinking about how we used to have to actually go to the library to like look stuff up and, you know, find books and all this stuff. And now that's not the case. Like you can just go on the internet and look things up. It's just, it's super neat. To just, like, have all this stuff, you know? To have all this here to to make life easier. Just, you know, we, ha we have access to all this stuff. It's, oh my god, it's mind-blowing. <laughs> it's completely mind-blowing. Just totally ridiculous. Oh god, what was one of the other things we were talking about? Um... What the hell just happened? Oh, I thought I just saw a flash on the on the screen there for, from the game, but no. Right, I'm chasing this lizard very stupidly. I should not be doing this. This is a very bad idea. This is a very bad idea. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's such a bad idea. You're going to screw yourself. Yep, you're screwed. Good job. <sighs> Brain, I don't know what you were thinking, but oh well. Um... <laughs> So we also had a discussion about uh, eating cookies and milk. Uh, so I always thought the default way of eating cookies and milk was to dip your cookie in your milk. Or dunk, as, as it's called. Uh, which Girlfriend believes is... Um... Oh my god, I completely lost the word. It's like, an an not anti, but uh, like... Not hedonism, not hubris. What the heck is it? I can't think of the word, so screw it. But she, she's, she is not a fan, to say the least. She is the kind of person that will take a bite of cookie and then take a drink of milk. She does not dip the cookie in the milk. Myself, as I said, I am a dunker. Uh, though I did pay the price for my dunking hubris um, because... I, I dunked the cookie and then put it down on the plate that we had. or uh, not, not that we had. We weren't sharing a plate. It was my plate. Um, but then when I went to pick up the cookie, it had solidified itself sort of to the plate. And all the dunked part had just stuck to it. And so I had to pay the price for my dunking hubris. Um, which <laughs> everybody laughed at, of course. Uh, even, even though it was a... Horrible, horrible experience. No, it wasn't that bad. But, I mean, it, it still felt terrible. What is going on with the... See, this is not something I fully understand. I think that when one of the vultures loses its mask, the other vultures just try to kill it. Like, they harass it until it dies. I think that's what's going on here, but I can't be positive? Yeah, I think that's what's going on. Uh... But yeah, one of the other things we were talking about was when 
like I, I remember when we first got internet in our house and we used our really old printer and my dad was like, oh yeah, check this out. You know, do you want to, is there anything you want to print out or like something you want to do? And I was like, oh yeah, yeah. And so I've, I've always been like really into reptiles and stuff like that. And uh, so we went to this website where they talked about snakes and stuff. And we printed out a picture of an orange uh, python. It, well, I mean, it had like orange coloring in some spots. And it came out of the printer looking like this orange blob that was nearly indiscernible. But for us at the time, it was fine. Like, we were like, holy crap, this is so cool. Like, you can it, you can print out pictures of a snake off of the internet, which is a new thing. Like, that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. And now, you have special papers and printers and stuff that are super detailed and, you know, you can see all kinds of uh, uh, details and all the things you can print out and, like, you can edit videos on, like I'm doing right now, on your own personal computers and, like, you know, sound files and stuff when long ago you used to need much more powerful machinery to do this stuff. And I say machinery, but I mean, like, you know, it's like when people say, refer to a computer as a machine. It, it is, but, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Just more more complex stuff. Much more processing power, etc. Just technology has come such a long way. And it's also interesting that my perspective on that is somewhat reliant on or not reliant but comes from gaming technology because i remember some of the first computer games that i played were digger not dig dug digger and a game called crystals and also my dad would play doom and i would you know watch and help him and by help him i mean you know like, if there was uh, an area with invisible demons and we were trying to figure out how to get past them easily and then, you know, like, we figured out, oh, the chainsaw is, like, a really great way because they can't actually get to you and you just keep using the chainsaw and they die and you don't have to use up any ammunition, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, we went from that to when we got a gateway computer in 1995. Or was it 96? I think it was 95. And the games that it came with were things like Asteroids and uh, Battlezone, which were arcade games from some time ago. And, you know, I played those a little bit, but then we also, with this, we had Encarta 95, which was, like, the first encyclopedia on a computer. Or one of the, one of the first, I, I guess. Uh, and I spent so much time on that thing, just, like, looking at pictures of, like, different animals and stuff and, like, looking things up. It was just one of the coolest things. And now we have things like Wikipedia, and I'm sure there are other programs out there, and, you know, you can probably get uh, a lot of the encyclopedia stuff online, like you can order an encyclopedia online, etc. And things like Amazon. It, just to think where we've come from and where we are now, it is really, really crazy. And also to think that there are people out there that will never have known a world that doesn't have these things. But then you can also say the same about us. Like, what was it like for the first person, or not for the first person, but, you know, for, uh, yeah, for, for some of the first people that were born without, or th th that were born at a time where electricity was ubiquitous enough, like electricity in your home was ubiquitous enough that there was not really a place where there wasn't electricity. You know, like, what what was it like for their parents and grandparents to say, you know, oh, you don't know how good you've got it. And they're like, yeah, whatever. Because, you know, they've had this their entire lives, but these other people haven't. That is just, just to, to think about that, to try to put that in perspective, is just crazy. I know I've said it's crazy a lot of times, but you have to understand, like, where I'm coming from, where I'm coming at this from is totally that, that meme of the dude with the, like, the exploding head thing where he, like, he's got his hands on his head and he, like, moves his hands out. It looks like a big galaxy is exploding. I forget what the heck it's called. I think that's a Tim and Eric thing. I don't know. I, I, I'm not familiar with, with your kids and your memes. But I, I guess what the, the point of this is I'm trying to... What I'm trying to articulate and failing to do so is uh, trying to say, basically... Try to appreciate the things that you have, because even though you may take it for granted, some of this stuff is really freaking amazing. Like, I, I take it for granted as well, but thinking about it, like really putting thought into it, holy crap. Our lives are science fiction in comparison to some other people.
or it's in, to, in comparison to how things used to be. Honest to God, science fiction. Like, I ran into a friend of mine the other day who had an Apple Watch, or iWatch, whatever it's called, which he can answer calls on. It counts his steps. It, like, can tell him the weather, and, like, it isn't on. Like, the, the display isn't on unless he turns it towards him. Just, this is stuff out of freaking Dick Tracy. If you don't know what Dick Tracy is, it's a, a detective with, like, crazy weird villains and technology. It, it, it's like a 50s, 40s kind of themed, uh, you know, noir. Noir? Would it be noir? I don't know. It, uh, the detective kind of show. Really all I remember about it is that the guy had a super big, a, 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 like, super yellow trench coat. But, uh, anyway... <laughs> That's enough talking about crazy technology and stuff. That's going to be it for this episode, folks. Hope you all did enjoy it. And if you did, you know what to do. That is me from Notorious BLT. Hope you have a fantastic day. And I will catch you all next time. Bye-bye, folks.